Not the most common, but a very dangerous vulnerability is command injection. The attack surfaces when untrusted input is passed into a function that executes that input as code. Most famously, the eval function, but there are many other functions that do the same thing across every programming language. Upon successful exploitation, we can usually execute arbitrary commands, any command we want, on the target, and ideally, this leads to a shell or the means to which we can continue our attack. We'll start with a brief primer so you can see what's happening under the hood, and remember that most of the time, when we think we have command injection, there will be defenses that we also need to bypass. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's dive in. So before we look at our lab on exploiting command injection, I threw together a simple node application that you're welcome to download, test, practice your source code review, make into a CTF, whatever you like. We'll take a quick look at the application functionality first, and then a brief look at the code. So here we have the repository and it's set to public. So once again, you're welcome to come in and use this if you like. And I'm just gonna to come to code and copy HTTPS and then git clone and paste this in. And then I'm gonna CD into, whoops, CDF command injection, clear. And then you can see that we have the files on our local machine. So all I'm gonna do is npm install to install the packages that we need. Clear this once again, and then node server.js. And you see that we get server running on HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3000. Control click to open this up. And here we have our command injection demo. So we have three different ways to execute our command and there are essentially three different endpoints and I've just put some basic controls on each one to demonstrate things that you might run into. So the first one has no protection at all. So we just do who am I and we get our output Kali. If we try and execute this on the second one, we get command not allowed, but what's happening here is it's trying to find a keyword. So it's looking for a command that is allowed. So we might be able to do something like uptime and here we get the uptime and then we might be able to chain a command and say uptime who am I and here we get Kali on the end and also this VM has passwordless sudo so if I do sudo who am I and run this you can see that we're actually root as well and then if we try to execute this in number three, we get command injection detected. So it looks like it's probably filtering on this special character here. So if I remove this, we get our execution again. And maybe we can do something like we can fuzz for the different characters. So if we try this, we get command injection detected. If we try this, we get command injection detected. If we try this, we get, ah, command failed. So we get an error here, but it looks like we might be able to do something like, who am I? Output this to temp, test.txt, run this, and then maybe we can cat this file, for example. So we might be able to write a web shell, overwrite configurations, and things like this. So let's take a very brief look at the code as well. So Visual Studio Code, and let's just file open. And then the main file we want is the server.js. And in the view, you can see that we have the templates that gets rendered, but here is most of the interesting stuff that we need. So the application is using express, body parser, and we can see this const exec equals required child process. So this is being used to execute code has some headers. And when we visit slash, we just get the index for template rendered. And then here we have execute. So if you're not used to code review, then this is a really simple application to get started with. And if you see something that you don't understand, like, hey, you don't know what request.body.command is, then maybe drop it into Google, drop it into chat GPT, get it to explain it to you, and then try and understand the flow. And we have three different endpoints. So having a read through, trying to get an understanding of what's happening and then working backwards and writing your payload is going to help you improve your code review skills, which I think is a skill that's somewhat underrated. So here we have slash execute and we're creating this variable called user command and we're passing in 
the value from request.body.commands. So the value of this, which is who am I, is passed into here. And then we're executing this. And then it looks like we're catching some errors and returning them if that happens. Otherwise, we return outputs and the output of the command that was executed. Very simple and no protection at all. Next, we have the execute check words. So here we have the same thing, but we have this if statement and we've got if date or ping or uptime, then it's only going to execute our command if it contains one of these keywords. And this is of course vulnerable because it's not saying something like the command equals uptime and the two strings have to match exactly. It's saying, hey, your command needs to contain this. So obviously, as we saw before, this is quite easy to bypass with uptime and then who am I? In this case, it's basically just grepping for these keywords, so easily bypassed. And finally, we have execute check characters endpoints. And here, it looks like it's filtering based on the characters, as we saw before but it's missing the greater than character as well. So we'd probably need to add this in there so that that becomes secure. Although using a block list and filtering like this is prone to errors. So this is not best practice. Once again, feel free to clone the application, have a play around with it, test different payloads. It's up to you. So that's it for our demo application. And there are a few resources that I wanted to mention. The command injection defense cheat sheet from the OWASP cheat sheet series is a great place to start if you need some guidance on how to prevent this attack in your application. The OWASP testing guidelines are also a good starting point for testing for command injection. Just remember that no one resource is comprehensive and every technology stack has its quirks, but these are great places to start. Now let's dive into the hands-on lab. So here we have blind OS command injection with output redirection. And let's take a look at the description. So this lab contains a blind OS command injection vulnerability in the feedback function. The application executes a shell command containing the user supplied details. The output from the command is not returned in the response. So we need to use output redirection to capture the output from the command. And it gives us a writable folder at var www images. And the application serves images for the product catalog from this location. You can redirect the output from the injected command to a file in this folder and then use the image loading URL to retrieve the contents of the file. It's nice that it's a multi-stage attack, although it's giving us quite a lot of information. So maybe that spoils a little bit of the fun. To solve the lab, execute the who am I command and retrieve the outputs. So with a lab like this, because it did give us a lot of hints and a lot of instructions, I think we just need to remember that as you're going through it, try and go back and figure out how you might actually find and exploit this vulnerability. So for example, it's given us var dub dub images. How might we fuzz for this writable location and also others? Of course, usually things like slash temp is world writable, but we can't always rely on the defaults. And when it comes to blind command injection, I like to think about fuzzing for payloads that cause delays and also payloads that might cause errors as well. So anything that makes the application behave differently or give us some insight into what's going on under the hood is a good thing. Anyway, that's enough rambling. Let's get on and solve this lab. So first up, I'm just going to switch on my proxy. So I'm just going to use Foxy Proxy 8080. And here we have the shop. And if you remember, the vulnerability is in the submit feedback form. So let's head over to here and let's just submit something. Say Alex, Alex at alex.com, subject, Alex is here. And where is Jeremy? Submit feedback. And then we get thanks for submitting feedback. And what we want to do is come over to Burp Suites come to our proxy, HTTP history. And as usual, I usually come in here, switch all of this on so I can see all of the traffic. And then here we want to find this post request that we just created, control R to send to repeater, and then we can start working on our attack. So if we scroll down, we can see the inputs of the fields. And something that I might want to do is fuzz these different fields. So I could send this to intruder, 
But what I'm going to try and do is just test them one by one and see what response I get if I put in a special character. So here we get 200 OK. And then if I add one to the email and send, we get a 500 internal error could not save. So this is an indication, not necessarily that it's vulnerable, but it's saying, hey, you've caused an internal server error. This warrants further investigation. So we might actually want to add a valid command onto the end so that maybe what's happening is this is chaining on a, another command, but then this is causing an error. So let's send this. We still get 500 internal server error. If I add another one to the end, Still the same thing. What if I remove the email address like this? Still no luck. But hmm, I'm thinking maybe this is still executing our code because it's blind command injection. Maybe what's happening is, is the command is executing, but then maybe it's breaking something in that maybe it's not saving this to the database correctly, or maybe it's catching some other error. So what I'm going to try and do is let's just echo hello to the location that it gave us, which I think was var dub 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 images. Test.txt, hit send. We still get the 500 response. And remember that this is most likely outside the web route. I think in the instructions, it told us that we'd need to request that includes images. But by default, we're usually looking at var dub 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 HTML for Apache and things like var dub 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 uh, nginx defaults for nginx and some others depending on the version as well. Sometimes it's in user share, et cetera, et cetera. So what we want to do is come back to our proxy. We can't see any includes for images at the moment. So let's head back to the application, come back home. And I suspect if we view details here, this is probably what it's talking about. It's being loaded in. And yeah, here you can see we have slash image file name equals 20. So once again, control R, send to repeater, and let's try test.txt and see what this returns. We get a 200 OK and we get our message of hello. So yeah, we do have command injection, even though we're causing an, an internal server error. So let's do what we're meant to be doing and just output who am I to once again test.txt and this should just overwrite the file. And then we come back to here, click send and here we get our user.txt. And I wonder if that solves the lab. It does, congratulations, you solved the lab and we've achieved blind command injection by using the redirect output special character. So that's it for this video. And of course, if you found it helpful, then once again, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.